Well, thank you for tuning in once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio on a Friday night. It is Friday night, July 26th, 2024. The year of our clownishness continues. Uh, We lost one clown. We gained uh, a porn star. Not exactly sure how that math works, but uh, apparently that is indeed how it works. Uh, As we approach the great selection in November, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say yes, I promise, Greg. I'm not quite sure what I'm promising to, but I think I can keep this one. Most of the time I can. Uh, and I'm uh, obviously I've already uh, been smoking the weeds today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting distracted by the live stream chat. I am not doing my duty, which of course is to tell you that uh, Friday night open lines is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio. Call in, let us know what is on your mind tonight. Let us know. Let us know what's been bugging you about the productions, uh, what you think we should be doing better on, what you think we do a great job of, uh, how much you hate the government. These are all topics that you can choose from uh, if you want to call in and uh, let us know what is rattling around uh, in that uh, cage of calcium that you carry around between your shoulders. The, uh, the link to call in, very important. Uh, it is in the uh, Liberty Radio Telegram Newsy channel. Uh, it's fairly straightforward and easy to operate from what I understand. Uh, but that is how you get in, just like uh, returning champion Rob did just now. And uh, you call in, you let us know what's on your mind. You do not have to turn on your camera if you are of the shy persuasion. Lindsey Graham knows a little something about that. Um, (laughs) But again, I cannot, cannot stress this enough. You do need to turn on your microphone. Otherwise, you're just a retard and nobody knows it but you. That's true. How you doing tonight, Rob? Great, Trezzel. How you making out? I'm doing all right. I am I'm very glad it's Friday. Very, very glad it's Friday. I'm looking forward uh to uh Saturday night anarchy tomorrow night discussing our, our new overlord, President Camel Toe. Um Yeah, I'm I'm sure that's uh gonna come up tonight in conversation. You think? Uh, it's it's like they didn't even they they stopped trying and uh this is what we get it's like fourth generation script writers living off of daddy's fucking merits you get a kamala I, you know i was thinking about that and i'm not saying that you're wrong at all i cuz again i think that is absolutely a component of it but i was looking at I was looking at her Wikipedia page last night, right? Verifying the whole, she went to school in Quebec uh, and all that sort of stuff. Because you you know Yona, right? He he talks a little shit sometimes. Most of the time he's good. He's on the level. Like I say, you can can trust what the Yona says about 99% of the time. <laughs> it's that one percent you got to be careful about, right? It's like every it's like everybody, right? Talking now, if they're talking out their ass, yeah. So I was going through all that information. I've been listening to you know all different kinds of of media uh, about uh, our our beloved uh, president in in chief elect or whatever the hell she is right now. I don't even know what we're supposed to call her. Is Joe going to be like turn up dead in the uh, Potomac in a week or something? Well, we'll like, get to that. We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> I, w- I definitely want to discuss like all the possibilities there because they're, they're absolutely endless uh, and most of them are hilarious. But um, so her father comes from 
uh, plantation owner uh, family, family line in Jamaica, right? So more than likely some connection to, to British intelligence or something like that. Uh, um, uh, something along those lines, Anglo-American establishment type things there. But then you yeah, go yeah. and you look on her mother's side, right? On the Indian side of things. And her mother was like a, a fucking uh, biotech scientist back before they knew what biotech was. And like she had all sorts of crazy fucking connections. And like Camel is just like she's gone through. She's basically done everything you need to do to check all the boxes except get a Rhodes Scholarship. That's pretty much it. She's done everything else. Like for I mean, for her to be like top rank level boule, dude, she's got it all. She's got it going on. As a matter of fact, I mean, when you're in the club, Donald Trump's cutting you checks when you're going to be like reelected for district attorney in California. Like right? How, how 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 would you know that connection be made in in any other sense? Like, who who the fuck would expect some New York? Uh, real estate tycoon to be caring anything about what's going on as a district attorney race in, in California. California, like completely yeah. the other side of the country. I mean, unless of course he has some sort of business interest in the district that she's going to be working in where I don't know, maybe she might look to come after him because of some shady business dealings or something. That would be the only thing I could think of. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to grease the wheels because I'm doing illegal shit in your fucking backyard. Yeah, and I want you to look the other way. That is how well, the system works as far as I understand it. Yeah, I don't think it's a big secret how that system works, but it, it's funny when you see things like that tying people in the current spotlight back in the day. Uh, yeah, well, they were I had all... a big old smile come across my face when I saw that on Twitter earlier this week. I was like, oh, all right. This is going to be fun. Yeah. And her fake fucking kind of see, like, democracy, democracy. Who, who the fuck exactly decides you're going to be on the ballot, honey? Well, it's apparently like, it was not Black Lives Matter. Uh, they are very I... upset about the fact that uh, democracy was completely skirted uh, en route to uh, uh, Camel Toe's candidacy. I mean, who can blame anybody for like pointing out the obvious? It's like, you... I mean, and if you really want to uh, like get into the legal context of it, this court, this case is already settled in the Supreme Court. They're a fucking private club and they don't need your permission to put people in place that they want to. And now we all just pretend, right? <laughs> Apparently. Apparently that's what we're supposed to do. I'm just going to sit here and ridicule the whole damn process for the next five months. Yeah. Hoping and praying every step of the way that it just completely falls apart before we even get to November. Well, I think that would I mean, be the best possible outcome, but that's just me. Well, I think Frank Zappa had a quote, famous quote that uh, freedom is only um, there as an illusion as long as it's cost effective or you know, I'm paraphrasing but when, we, hmm. when it's no longer cost effective <laughs> then the fucking chains and the starvation and all the fun stuff starts oh, yeah. this, is what you voted, this is what you voted for kids when you dumbed down your children and injected them with poisons and every fucking day man it's just more and more evident there's a lot of people in the herd to start really uh, pulling their weight. <laughs> well, and those are the ones that I believe uh, Yuval Noah Harari was referring to uh, when he used the term useless eaters, right? Like the ones that are, that are uh, dragging the rest of us down uh, as they would look at it. But then, of course, 
you know, I would probably fall into that category as well because, I, you know, I don't work in service of the, the grand narrative either. You know, his buddy Klaus wrote that, that book. Uh, that, I, I, you know. I thought that was a Kissinger. Like, did he steal that from Kissinger? <laughs> the useless ears? Probably. I mean, did, didn't everybody steal from Kissinger? Well, Kissinger stole from David Rockefeller. So and I'm sure David Rockefeller stole his evil from somebody else. You know, they just pass it down through the generations. So Kissinger now is going to give his evil to Eric Schmidt. And uh, we'll have him, you know, hanging like a vampire over the entire globe for the next 25, 30, 40 years, whatever. I mean, I'm personally going to get a lot of joy watching all those people who have that expectation of their like wealth and prominence is going to save them when there is no more wealth and <laughs> the stupid system they built falls fucking apart on top of itself. They're the first people are going to get dragged out into the streets. Well, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. Uh, Cause I found back in, uh, I guess I can start talking about it now. Because, uh, oh yeah, uh, I forgot to, totally forgot to promote it this week, but uh, two days from right now, uh, basically almost exactly 48 hours from right now, I will be on the BG cast on the Forbidden Knowledge Network. Uh, I have no idea what either of those are, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to find out on Sunday, but. I thought this would probably be a good time to start talking about the research that I have been doing uh, lately, which is I went back and revisited a white paper that I found like four or five years ago, right? Uh, from the, uh, uh, the deep moon shit. Oh yeah. 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 Well, it's from the, the moonshot symposium uh, from Japan in 2019. They had uh, all these different working groups uh, get together and brainstorm what life would look like in 2050 and what, what types of technologies, what kinds of governance, you know, what kind of economy are we, are we going to be using? Like all of the shit, like all the stuff that, you know, is involved in living in the world on a daily basis. They're like wargaming all this shit out. And the white paper that I'm uh, focusing on uh, looks primarily at uh, the economy from a global scale from the standpoint of monetizing human interaction with machines as the main <laughs> engine of the economy like we surpassed that already not quite the, the, the machine isn't physical um people interact with the machine every fucking day they go on and get steered by their different uh, social media feeds and the algorithms there so it's not a physical beast so to speak but well, correct correct that machine isn't going anywhere. That machine is only going to get stronger and more intrusive uh, under this new system that they want to install. But, you know, it's going to feed you hate, but it's never going to feed you who you should hate. <laughs> Not, really. Uh, Not really. Not really. Yeah. I, and if you're aware and you look at the things on, like, I, I don't use social media anymore. I have an X account, but... I don't use Facebook or any of that other Instagram or all that stuff, but it's, uh, it's pretty evident that they feed people that I do know that use that stuff, things that they want to say mm -hmm. and keep you in your little box. Don't uh, disturb things. Yeah. It is. Um, I mean, it's, it's conditioning. It's, I, I made the connection four years ago between like I, what Skinner and Pavlov were doing and what Facebook and Twitter are doing. It's no different. It's the exact same fucking thing. It's operant conditioning. Yeah. None of those people ever attracted me like the Alex Joneses of the world. Um, like you could see what frauds they are. 
they do, you know, tell you stuff that is true. So that's part of the whole psyop, like give you truth along with um, some ridiculous acting and over the top bullshit. Yeah. I mean, Twitter was fun for a while. The problem is they keep changing the parameters, right? As the Overton window shifts, they change the algorithm. So the, again, it goes to that thing where the thing you said six, you know, years ago wasn't offensive, but it finally gets to that point where the Overton window has shifted far enough that now it's a major infraction. Uh, and they try to set that up as like some sort of automatic check and balance system, which I still don't understand exactly how the fuck that's supposed to work. But, you know, I it's, mean, just, it's ridiculous. I, I've never paid for an account and, and I'm pretty sure I could go on and be either a liberal shill or a uh, conservative shill. And oh, all easy. of a sudden I, I could get, you know, millions of followers and getting them cutting me a fucking check. Like, well, you can buy well. followers just like Clint Russell did. You know, you can go out and buy like 10,000 followers at a pop, you know, and overnight your, your follower account will just blow up and people will be like, oh my God, who's this dude? Yeah, that's how it works. Hotep Jesus did the exact same thing. At least yeah, he's can, honest about it though. You can get a bunch of bots that go out there and like your shit. Great. Yeah. That 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 would be the uh, the ultimate cyber fucking hack right there, just destroying every uh, AI chatbot account on social media at once. That would be interesting, because it would be a much different landscape if they all just like vaporized. Yeah, even Telegram, which isn't like an open to the public kind of thing, like you got to be, you know part of some group or something for people to even be able to reach out to you. And there's just like, I mean, how many of you get a day since you're more prevalent in social media? How many a day do you get? Hey, how you doing James? Oh, on telegram, at least one a day, not so much yeah. in any of the other places. Like on Twitter, uh, I get a lot of activity from the sex bots. Because again, I'm people aren't supposed to see the things that I put on Twitter. So you know, like a good sentinel, the sex bot comes and likes you know the posts that people aren't supposed to see, so that it gets de-emphasized in the algorithm and and pushed to the bottom. And I'm my my online activity must be preceding me because I haven't commented on X in in a long time, at least a year probably, ah, maybe not. I think the the last time I was commenting heavily was last like October, November when I was in Italy about the whole thing going on in Israel. And strangely enough, they you know, swabbed me for explosives going on the plane. <laughs> but that yeah. must have been fun. It was like a two minute inconvenience, really. It wasn't a big deal. I was laughing the whole time. It's like, really? Like, really? Okay. I'm the one with the explosives? Okay. What What was it that tipped you off? My, my uh, impeccable working history, my whole fucking slave life. Right. <laughs> Must oh, have really. No, it was this box on the screen right here. Don't know how that got checked. Yeah. Probably somebody from the White House was like, that motherfucker. Put him on the list. I, I was. Uh... I, I made a uh, pretty vicious reply to a Tulsi Gabbard tweet. <laughs> <laughs> you think that was what did it? I think that was the freaking that was the censure. Uh, you could be right. You could be right. I know when I when I uh, send nasty messages in public to Elon and Linda, um, which I do try to keep that under control. They don't like that at all. I always get smacked hard on the wrist when when I do that, um, but most of the time it's worth it. Yeah, you really don't want your computer to get bricked on you, do you? It's like I mean, a push of a, I can it's a push. replace it. It's not a big deal, but and it, it, it's inconvenient to to have. It is that that, that is essentially the ability they have if you're connected to the internet. 
I mean, fortunately, device. Microsoft backs everything up for me, so I'm you know I'm good to go if it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> good thing. Good thing Big Brother's watching your back, brother. That's right. <laughs> uh, if we could all be so lucky. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, I have an external USB, but it doesn't mean when I plug it in, it doesn't like brick on me as well. Sorry. All those memories are gone now. You have improper thoughts. Well, shit. As long as I keep freaking slaving away in the system, I don't think anybody's going to care what I say. Probably not. And, Probably not. So you go out and start getting the movement behind you that uh, they take you seriously. Yeah. Once once you actually show that you can uh, you can organize people, uh, that's when you become a blip on the radar. I've figured that much out so far. Because yeah. I, I honestly, I expected that we would get shut down uh, much earlier than now due to uh, like copyright uh, violations and that sort of shit, right? Hasn't happened. Yeah. I haven't heard squat about copyright from anybody about anything. Yeah, I'm guessing if you had about a million subscribers on YouTube, all of a sudden things would be a big problem. But I, I don't know that anybody gets there. I don't. I mean, I'm sure there are people who authentically get there, but they're not talking about anything about the the current zeitgeist. They're doing cat videos and you know, walking around the country taking videos. Shit. They're they're not talking about anything that's challenging the power structure. No. I would say. No. I thought about doing cat videos too. Uh, why the fuck not, man? I mean, shit, man. If it makes money. You can fucking monetize the shit. It, it, everybody that's, loves that's cats. That's one way to change the world. Yeah, everybody loves cats. But they should. If they don't, you know, they need to justify why they don't, in my mind. Yeah, I have an ongoing uh, dilemma I created for myself by getting chickens and having three outdoor cats. How is that working out so far? So far, I mean, when when you get them from like Tractor Supply or most suppliers, they're like a couple of days old. So you got to get them in a brooding box and have like heat and food and raise them up until they're like 12 weeks old. Reduce the heat on them and stuff like that. But they're uh, interesting little creatures. They're growing very fast. I've had them for a little over like a week and a half now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to develop their little personalities. I I was just reading. I, I didn't realize when I got them, and I should have, but I uh, I was reading today that places like Tractor Supply that supply them, they get those things shipped to them after they're 24 hours old. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they're that young. That's so crazy. They hold them for the first 24 hours, and they ship them out from the suppliers well shit ultimately they want to do that to humans yeah, yeah. i'm sure it takes all the fun out of it doesn't it i i mean i don't know it, it, the the raising the children part yeah um well they've they've affected- well, i mean we're not going to be at a certain point we're not going to be allowed to have sex they'll just make sex illegal right well, they, they've got this like fake inflated economy where everybody's making more money than they're worth. Generally, <laughs> not going to say that's like a hundred percent across the board, but it's like, well, what skills can you actually like provide if all the fucking electric went out? <clears throat> yeah. Or the internet or the internet. What if the internet went out? What if we got a taste of that about a week ago? Somewhat. Not somewhat. completely, not completely, but somewhat. And and look how bad the fall guy went on TV. He, he had to have the uh, person who was given the mercy interview tell him to take a drink of water because he was so fucking... <laughs> 
That was bad, there, man. That was really there, bad. Did those guys used to jump out the windows, or was that just for financial like holdings in Wall Street? <laughs> well, I mean, when you look at it from a liability standpoint. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't want to be that guy holding the fucking bag because his company sent out an update that blue screened even fucking one computer. Well, exactly. Exactly. Because you're you're literally holding the bag. You're on camera holding the bag and everybody knows it. Like you're yeah. you're under a microscope does not even begin to describe it. So so like on a fucking microcosm, you got that in the business economy, and then you got the social security director over there acting like, you know, fucking every day is all right. You know, they like regardless if it was all a fucking show. Like, motherfucker, really? Shots were fired, actual people got killed in the fucking crowd and injured because you're incompetent and you're gonna sit here and pretend like you're not the one where the buck stops with like resign fucking immediately with integrity. Like even if it wasn't some sham fucking show, well, she, did, fucking break, she, did, she did resign. What's she did Skeeter mosquito after weeks of like scrutiny and like both, both of the fake political parties, like taking like tea off, you know, uh, fucking, I guess photo ops for their reelection campaigns or whatever the fuck it was. But usually the only time they ever agree as a political party is on who to go to war with or what Israel wants. So to, to see them like, you know, teeing off on that and not like surprisingly, the Again, one fucking, the one thing they didn't try to make work. Yeah. The, the one thing they didn't try to make partisan, like every other fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah, whenever you see the two parties come together on an issue, doesn't matter what the fucking issue is, it it's a fucking it's scripted. Yeah, exactly. And I I just I I, I saw that fucking BB getting introduced by Mike Johnson, and I like I I was laughing talking to my girlfriend saying that 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 looks like. Yeah. Uh, those those fucking idiots who are like clapping like seals. They were all told like before the whole fucking appearance that you know not all of you are gonna make it, and your APAC fucking handlers are watching to see who has the most enthusiasm, and the rest of you you're getting primaried. Fuck you, people. You're not you know sucking enough Israeli dick. Oh yeah, this you're was out. this was a company pep rally. Is yeah, that what that's was what going on. That's what it looked I like. I remember that shit. Like you don't give enough fucking enthusiasm. Look, yeah, you don't look cuts. excited enough about this genocide. Fucking cuts can be made, brother. Uh, that that yeah. could get back to the boss. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, he sure did look like the boss when he was like coming down off his plane and had his own security, like you know, real security. <laughs> yeah. Not some bullshit making people happy. So we get like a five foot tall person, you know, guarding a guy who's six foot fucking two. Dude, when was the last time John Fetterman wore a suit? I, when? A, a funeral? I, I don't know if he would put a funeral. I don't suit. know if Does I've ever, ever seen him in a suit before. I don't know if I ever want to see him in a suit again, but I don't know if I've ever seen him in a suit before. I'm usually a fucking interview, funeral, suit kind of guy myself. Wedding, <laughs> maybe. Oh, to answer your question, uh, John Kershaw in the Rumble chat, uh, ice cream cake. I am uh, smoking some ice cream cake that I got at the Apothecary Farms dispensary in Pueblo, Colorado, just a few short weeks ago. Thank you for asking. Sweet. Yeah, it's good stuff. I'm almost I'm almost done with the ice cream cake. I think I'm going to get into the White Widow next. You know, take a trip down memory lane, you know. I I didn't take advantage except when I was there. I got stuff and I just kind of spread it around with everybody. I didn't really bring anything home with me other than a little bit. 
Well, yeah, but you've got, you've got dispensaries around there. You know, I, I still live in the fucking, uh, the combination deep south, old west, where we're still going by the, the like 1920s uh, rules now, on things most of the time. That was what I, I was really surprised driving from the East Coast to Pueblo was Missouri is recreationally legal. And it didn't hit me till I saw like a fucking thousand billboards driving through the state that I think it's actually not medical. It's recreationally legal here. Right. Then Shelly looked it up and was like, yeah. I don't know. Like every different state has their own uh, little scam that they're pulling. They try to figure out what the uh, the plebes want and give it to them at a high tax rate with a bunch of pesticides and shit. And most of the states don't have uh, the ability to grow your own still. Hmm. Some Fortunately, some of the ad- activists who legis- you know, work for the legislation on the state level got that included. Uh, if you don't know where it's fucking grown, you don't know what the fuck you're smoking. Well, my question is when, because it seems at this point, it seems more likely that uh, federal decriminalization is going to happen in uh before texas does any sort of legalization whatsoever so like how exactly is that going to work are they just going to let it revote revolt revert back to a state's rights issue at that point and be like well texas still says it's illegal so i guess it's illegal i don't know what happens when the dollar is any real thing anymore that is a good question uh, I'm trying to figure out the answer to that. It's it's not something I really contemplated like 20 years ago. And I heard people talking about it. It was an inevitability back then. And just kind of like, well, yeah, but still. But you, you see all the signs. They're, they're, you know, fucking ridiculously inflated the amount of uh, fake debt. I mean... If if you understand the way the the financial system works, the every dollar in circulation is based off of debt. So we wouldn't if if we paid off our debt, so so to speak, there wouldn't be any cash at all. It's a wonderful situation if you're the one holding the ability to print. Yeah, I guess it is. And there's no tangible value other than the uh, enforcement of the gun to accept our <laughs> cash as legal tender. Well, that's that's exactly what the monopoly of violence should be used for. Enforcing your will. Right? Exactly. I mean, because why, <laughs> why would they do things that weren't to your interest? <laughs> well, I mean, we only... It, as much as people don't want to... Uh, look at it this way because I guess it's it's too uh, uncomfortable uh, of a point of view. Each and every single one of us, I don't, I don't care who you are, in in these United States, you you live at the pleasure of the government. Government can take you out any fucking time it wants and does not have to answer a damn question about it. Yeah. Well, what always uh, intrigues me is when I see somebody like a J.D. Vance, somebody who, I mean, <laughs> he, had, he, had, he had an easy fucking upbringing from where I came from. <laughs> mm. But to, to see somebody like that who comes from poverty, like clear poverty, who like is uh, going to use it to fuck people over, it just, I don't know. There are those people. Yeah. And they usually end up in government at, at a high level. Well, he found early financing, I guess. Yeah. Had it, you know, how many fucking 30 year olds already are penning 
fucking biographies about their life at that point. Right. You know, fucking break. Right. Because my life up to the age of 30 was uh, just, dude, endless entertainment. Absolutely yeah. endless entertainment. Should have been a Hollywood blockbuster, ladies and gentlemen. I, I am That's what you're missing sure. out on. I'm sure somebody would have paid to watch my life story. But uh, I guess. <laughs> right. Everybody. Like how how exactly do you do an autobiography unless you're like Helen Keller and even of course we find out now that, that story is complete bullshit. Uh, but unless you have a story like that to tell, who has actually really accomplished anything? What the fuck did Elon Musk accomplish by the age of thirty? I don't, yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, had a bunch of money out of nowhere. Um, failed college student, but has a huge financial ability to start companies. Well, to buy companies. Buy companies. Yeah. My bad. Because he didn't actually start any of them. He didn't start Tesla. He didn't start Twitter. I think X.com was the only one that he started. And that eventually got uh, bought up by what? PayPal? I think, and then he had to he had to get it back as part of his his severance or whatever. Yeah, and the guy who like really made the Tesla car work, he uh, forced him out of the company, and the car that he was promised <laughs> got shot into space. Yeah, as a gesture of like fuck you. I'm yeah. the, the fake the fake money guy who took over all the shit that you worked your whole fucking life to develop. Yeah. Isn't it like one story after another? Yeah. These folks. Yeah. With Elon, it is. Like, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt at first, too, because I was like, all right, I don't know much about this guy. I'll see how it goes. But, yeah, I gave it about five years, and then I was like, no, he's he's – He's in the club. He is, Jesus Christ, he's the number one defense contractor. So you don't get into that position if, like, uh, behind closed doors, you're not all in lockstep on shit. Right. So, his, his, his like, fake... There was a reason that he showed up in the Capitol to listen to Netanyahu's speech. There's, there's also a like, reason. How do people not fucking see this shit? There's also a reason for the fake Trump shit that he's like out there telling people he's going to give ninety five million dollars a month to his reelection. Yeah, I thought that was illegal. <laughs> oh, it, it's just more more of Elon shooting his mouth off. Like nobody, yeah, yeah. nobody looks at it from from that standpoint. They're just like, "Oh, he's a billionaire. He must have the money to do it." So it's just like posturing. What's up, RBL? Oh, bam! Now he's it. on the stream. What's up, is. RBL? Hey, let me. Uh, you move actually my mic beat up. Yona in. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, I forgot it was Friday, man. Oh, I, I, don't. I, you know, I always forget. And then it, it's always a surprise. Like, oh, it's time for the stream. And I'm usually too fucking high and tired. But I get that. Yeah. I got to try. I got to start trying to stay up later on Tuesday night so I can jump in on uh, TNP live. They had a they had a really good uh, uh, ensemble conversation. This past Tuesday. If y'all haven't seen that, check it out. A whole bunch of people jumped in on it. Who, who was in there? Um, Steve from AM Wake Up was in there. Uh, Nature Boy was in there. A um, couple of folks I'm not as familiar with. Um, yeah, I'm too high to remember anybody else. <laughs> A uh, well, rank cast might have been, because yeah, I think it I, it initially started with uh with six and uh and rant, and then people started jumping in. 
Rant sounded like he was uh, either on drugs or he was back to beat himself a little this week. He was fucking ranting and oh, cutting everybody hot, off. Yeah. He was fucking hot. It was. I thought it was funny as fuck, but I saw a bunch of people in the chat were giving him shit about it. Oh, wow. No, I, I find it entertaining. Oh, it is it's, entertaining. I mean, part of it is he does he does get to that point where, like, it's just everything that pops into his brain goes into oh, the dude. microphone and he just does not shut up. If, if I was like on workman's comp and didn't have like a job to fucking do for eight hours a fucking day, holy Christ, I could imagine myself just fucking making videos and tearing into fucking all this absurdity in the world, man. It's just, if you're paying any attention and, I, and you watch all the, like the people who don't really know what's up, seeing it all fucking happen and they're like uh <laughs> dude come on i'm just glad i don't the have end. to i don't have to interact with uh normies too much i you know right. i didn't know i didn't think i was gonna see it in my actual uh lifespan but this is what the end of the empire looks like kids i lost the a normie deck. friend yesterday day before Oh, what happened? Because, what, what was your transgression, may I ask? Uh, I was 15 different things. Um, uh, it's racist, good. Good. Racist. I was a bigot. I was a xenophobe. Can you guess what uh, the conversation was about yet? Uh, was it a school? Was it like... Whoa. <laughs> uh, Biden I, stepping I, down. I, I, we, no, we were any. talking about the open border and uh, open 30 border. million illegal immigrants that have come across it since Biden took over. And, uh, do we, do we know that number for sure? Like, does anybody have I, somebody got the punch cards can back it up? Is there anybody who it's even pretty fucking good guess, cares enough to like, how could you even estimate other than like an unfettered fucking flow? Of people 15,000 have come in one day. You know? so, <laughs> it's like, Show me what it's like when you try to stop them, and then I'll show you what it's been like when they haven't. <laughs> All right. So, so let me let me ask you this, RBL. What do you think those thirty million people are here for? I think a I fair mean, amount of them are are here for the American dream or whatever the fuck is left of it, right? I think a, a fair amount of them are here. The, they, they've been stores. sold. They've been sold that fake American Take our dream. firearms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I think. You know, if we just vote for people who give a shit for free without doing anything, um, in the land of plenty, right? They're here to. They're here to vote Democrat. That's that's even let's, a better answer. Let's let's you know in this vast fucking Could space be. of what is the United States, it's all conglomerate in these uh, small little fucking urban centers where everybody's dependent on something to keep them going. Well, you know what that's great. Yeah, for? as I understand it, it's great for it's great for controlling people. Like as that. as things uh, progress throughout the decade, uh, the areas. Outside of the major metropolitan areas uh, are supposed to become more unstable, whereas the the city centers will be able to, again, hypothetically, they'll be able to provide their own security, you know, out, <laughs> out to a certain, you know, they'll have like a bubble around the city where they'll be able to, you know. Uh, enforce dude, their will essentially, you know, and then beyond that will be just like the wildlands because there won't be law enforcement or, uh, you know, fire sure. departments or EMS service or anything like that. And they'll sure, be, let me, they'll be there to fucking crack heads to chase us let, into the mega let, cities, right? Like, yeah, so let, let, out here farming. Let, uh, let me relay a story of mine, like personal experience in the city. I, I went in on Tuesday to Philadelphia um, to my office and I uh, went to the first convenience store that didn't have any hot water and threw my fucking cup with tea bags and the trash can in disgust 
and, and walked like five more blocks to another convenience store of the same brand, Wawa, if you're all familiar. <laughs> and uh, as I'm in there making my tea, because they did actually have hot water, I see a Philadelphia police officer who had walked in to get himself something. He wasn't like stationary anything. And he's harassing this homeless guy who had walked in with a Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup with his own tea bags and, you know, made the mistake of using the hot water of the Wawa. And the, the oh, fucking no. cop is just being a fucking dickhead to him saying, yo, you didn't pay for that. You're stealing. I, I could take you in right now. And like, I'm like watching this go down as I'm making my tea. <laughs> and I'm like, fucking really? Like, don't they I'm let looking people at the guy for less than a thousand dollars anyway, everywhere now? Like, yeah. And, and like, after he no, keeps some, telling the, some places have lowered it to like 500 now. Like, they're starting telling, to try and rein it back in. You know, the, the feeble attempt to try and get it under control before they just fucking stomp down on everybody. Yeah. He keeps telling the guy to go dump the water out or he's going to take a in. The water. The water. The fucking hot water. He didn't take a tea bag. He didn't take a cup. Yeah. And the, the, the fucking store didn't call the cops. He was just a cop who just happened to be in there. Yeah, and, and that's he, why he's a cop. So he can and, yell at you about water. And he, that's not called, his. he fucking called backup in, dude. I bullshit you not. As I was like still fucking putting honey in my tea, a backup cop came in. <laughs> that's, and must that's have must must have talked some fucking sense into the guy and they let him fucking walk as I was paying for my fucking They've got hot water. Infinite bag. resources for their pissing contest ego challenges, you know. They well, well well during the whole fucking thing, I hear him say to the, the homeless guy, Shh, do I need to call the store manager over here to see if it's all right for you to have that water? Like, like, like I said, it wasn't like the store manager had called and like asked for police right. help. This motherfucker just walked in off the street and just decided, you know, I'm a cop. I'm going to fucking <coughs> <laughs> call you a thief for taking hot water. Bro. Okay. And then, you know, I got my tea and I walked down the street and I watched this crazy motherfucker that they let go walk down the middle of the fucking street and nobody was doing shit. This is right, what, like balancing on the lines in the middle no, of the street? No, no, he's, he's walking right down the middle of the fucking street with his two fucking bags and his hot water and tea. <laughs> uh, oh, John, man, man. John Kershaw wants to know, were they... Uh, Ex-military cops or out-of-shape Jersey cops? Oh, this was in Philadelphia. They were big, Okay, out-of-shape Philly cops. The, the, the one dude, I'll give him credit, he was a bicycle cop. This, the, the guy who got called in for the bullshit, who like, was like, dude, what are you doing? Did he, have, did he wear the, 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 the bi bicycle cop shorts? No, whatever. Fucking, I wasn't really fucking paying attention. I was just he was taking, taking down a lemonade stand across town when he got the call. Kind of. yeah. yeah some little girls sell lemonade on 12th and market better get over here whenever i see them i always think of lieutenant jim dangle oh, doesn't matter where i am what city as soon as i see a bicycle cop they're all jim dangle there's like 50 yeah. unsolved murders in your city right now and they're like I need backup. This guy's trying to take some water. <laughs> There's fucking broken fuckers laying outside of every like convenience store. Like they're not even conscious with just a sign of help. I'm homeless. Like, dude, you're on drugs, obviously. Like, if you were really <laughs> trying to fucking help yourself, you wouldn't be passed out in the middle of the day uh, with a sign on top of you. But maybe I'm just critical. <laughs> Can't afford sunblock. I don't know. There's a dude. I, I've been working this job for like nine years, and I've seen this same dude 
And uh, years ago, my boss, uh, who, who left <laughs> and I became the boss, he, he told me we were talking about this same guy. He was like, yeah, I got behind that dude in line at the bank one day. And the guy had like four different accounts. And the lady was asking him which account he wanted to take money out of. And it's like, what? <laughs> dude, there was a guy in my Hold, town. Holding the door for people outside of the 7-Eleven. There was this uh, this bum in my town. He had a big sombrero, and he was <laughs> around for like fifteen years, all the time. Every night he'd be out there with where the drunk kids were walking around, and he'd be like, "Anybody have any change?" Right? And he did this all the time. He was like a fixture of the town. One day, I saw the motherfucker get into a nice Cadillac. He put a sombrero in the fucking trunk with a bucket of fucking change, and got into a Cadillac. Then later, I talked to somebody that lived in Pittsburgh, which is like far north of here. I know that guy. He does that up here. This guy just drives around college towns and fucking bums money with, where the kids are drunk. And he's got more money than any of any of us. He's fucking loaded. His trunk is just full of change. Bam. Sounds I, like a smart dude. I don't know. <laughs> Something. I realized when I was like 20 that if I... Uh could just get over my own fucking moral disgust on <laughs> ripping people off. I could be a fucking billionaire real quick. Yeah, it's true. Matter of fact, like here's if, if you can harness uh, the, the ability to rip people off, you can do it real damn fast. I, I mean, I hate to go back to a local Wawa story, but I, I went in today to get a couple Zen and you have to buy them from an actual person. And there was only one cashier in like an eight person line of fucking idiots who wouldn't use the self checkout thing to buy their fucking nacho chips and make me fat fucking cheesecakes and whatever the fuck they're eating. And I'm just like, you know, we're standing right next to the self checkout. Do you really need somebody there in between you and your fat delights? <laughs> yes, is the answer. Yeah. Yes, is the answer. They need somebody to give them permission. They do. I guess. Yeah, they do. I give them permission. I give them permission. But they call those sheets here, the Wawa. Mm -hmm. I think they're called sheets. Or, yeah. Uh, very similar. Thing. Very similar. Sheets, loves. It's just a bunch of, you know, as I've driven across the country, it's like various different things that fill the same void. Uh, I don't, I don't know. It's always great coming up because you could I go did. in and order MTO nachos and then just take them and walk out eating them. Subnutritious sub poison to <laughs> make you craving more of it. Soybeans, GMO corn, glyphosate. Everything mm -hmm. a growing boy needs. Absolutely. So what's on your mind tonight, RBL? Just, I just now thought, uh, I went to a grocery store a couple weeks ago and I bought ground beef and it was like three ninety nine dollars a pound or something. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's kind of uh, reasonable. So I bought some and I got home and I made burgers and I... Grilled them like normal, and I was I bit into one, and I was like, "This is kind of like the texture of like meatloaf with a bunch of crackers in it, and an egg or something." You know? Yeah. I've been thinking, is this the impossible meat that expired, ground up with the old fucking like, what the fuck am I eating? What is this? Mm. And then I was like, textured uh, uh, plant protein or whatever, vegetable protein. Like, what the fuck is in this? Right. If you're not and getting it. If you're not getting it from its source, you're getting something else, brother. Yeah. I was at the Giant Eagle grocery store in Morgantown, West Virginia, and I bought the fucking hamburger, and it was is not really real. Something is weird in doesn't, it. Like, doesn't matter, man. The fake food <laughs> is going out everywhere. <clears throat> I, 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 who do I call? What do I? Who was, do I tell about this? Uh, it, good luck. So it's, <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's like fucking going out and telling. It's like it's going out and telling them that fucking all the uh, the pod people that have taken over are taking over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I'm still you're buying. Have, I'm still buying steaks at the grocery store, but I don't know how much longer that's going to last. Even the quality is way down on that. Oh my and god, is it way down? Oh yeah, chewy, chewy ribeyes. Really? When chewy you buy, ribeyes. when you buy the stuff at the supermarket that they uh, they grind up themselves, <laughs> they're allowed to put all kinds of filler shit in there. Oh yeah, they just come tell you that well shit we've uh, known about the the pink slime for what 20 years yeah it's still it's still going in fucking ground beef yeah. and shit like it's, it started, hasn't gone away when i started getting stuff from the beef initiative like the taste of that meat compared to stuff that i had been getting at the local grocery store for 20 years was just yeah. so much different I think I'm just going to start going to an actual butcher. Like, fucking cut the grocery store, find a butcher somewhere. If it's an hour and a half away, bring a fucking cooler. If, if you uh, check out the beefinitiative.com website, you can find a local rancher in your area and go meet them and uh, work out a deal with them personally. And yeah. Because they... they in order to be part of their network, they have to certify to not be using hormones and um, antibiotics and uh, grass feeding, grain, some grain, but non-GMO stuff. So, so what was your experience like uh, with that, like Rob, like when you went to to meet the rancher? Or have <laughs> you have you been able to do that yet? No, I, I never did because when I. When I first started getting stuff there, it was like at the beginning of the whole thing. He had three ranchers. Now he's got ranchers all across the world, I believe. I haven't really looked at the, the latest tally, but the only people you could get were like three ranchers in Texas. And KC Cattle was the one that I went with. And the... Uh, the stuff came as advertised. You get a mix. You didn't really get to pick what your mix was. I, if you pay more money, I'm sure you do get to get select cuts. Mm. But since then, the network has expanded ridiculously. It's like over a, like a year and a half or so that I joined up. Oh, so you've been doing it for over a year. Yeah, I have to rejoin, apparently, because uh, my credit card expired. And for some reason, any any other service just keeps billing that credit card when it gets uh, reissued. Depends on the payment processor. They well, they have uh, different ones have, have different uh, built-in protocols. Like I think on... Uh, I don't know exactly how it works on on ours on the website because I actually I can't I have no access to any of that stuff. It's all user controlled. Uh, but I know like uh, uh, El Ebertas had an issue where he had to swap out an old card that he had to cancel for the new one. I did absolutely nothing, and it was it it went through and did its thing. Whatever he he did, I don't know. I have not a clue. I I've had like a web address registered for like twenty years, and you know what? I've never given them new <laughs> credit card information, but I've had the same credit card as it expired and got renewed, and I somehow I've never lost that stupid domain address. <laughs> huh. That's interesting. I'm kind of in the the desert in the void here. I'm uh, south of Pittsburgh. By that corner on the West Virginia, the state of West Virginia, this corner here. Oh, well, Morgantown, yeah, right here. Boom. That's just out, just outside None. the influence of Big Brother. <laughs> closest, closest one For right now. Here. That's what you think. For now. Huh. Red Banks Beef at Gmail. Pretty far. My neighbor's got cows in his yard. Maybe I should just knock on his door. There you go. Where he lives, like two and a half miles, three miles from here. But on my way to my house, I passed this house that has cows. Hmm. 
I'm sure if you uh, struck the conversation, the guy's not going to be able to use a whole cow. He'd like to use you know, some kind of barter system, work out for yeah. a quarter. There's a place. He may not even do his own processing. There's a place over here in Kingwood. I think it's in Kingwood. Uh, it's called Streets. And it's like oh, a yeah? butcher shop. They Straight up butcher shop. Word yeah. Song? yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna go there and do that. That's right. It. Go check out streets, man. Fuck my grocery <laughs> store. Guys. You heard it here first. I am. Mm. You will absolutely yeah, taste the you, difference in the first bite and be like, "Fuck that stuff." Dude, you have RBL. You have the wildest uh, video display I think I've ever it's, seen. Schizophrenia for, for the masses. It's the, I just wanted to advertise the great show known as New World next week. Yeah, that is a good show. I watch, I've been away. watching that. And uh, also, uh, I want to advertise the Pfizer BioNTech COVID 19 vaccines. What? Here's our mascot, uh, the Grim Reaper. He's the mascot for the new advertising push. That's good. They're still putting that poison out there. It's amazing. Like nobody's hung or nobody cares. Fuck At it. This We're going to no, keep giving it. Cares. The media We're going to keep really, pretending. Oh, dude, the media is all worked up over Camel did you see how? Did you see how quickly the NPCs got their new programming become Kamala, Kamala Harris supporters overnight? Like yeah. I, somebody was telling me like a gas station dude was harassing them about how great like she is. Like people are just no, activated. I, I I appreciate the entitledness of someone like Ben Affleck's daughter and tell us all that we need to be wearing masks because she's got a fucking condition caused by an experimental vaccine. <laughs> I she listen to those fucking idiots and thinks a mask is going to do anything but make you have bacterial infections. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, uh, you know, go figure. Uh, I've been to a doctor dumb. since I was 12, you know, and... Uh, all I did, all I took for the coof was some vac. Uh, no, not vaccines. Sorry, vitamins. I was never sick, not once. Me neither. During the scamdemic, I went bowling during during the bowling. actual declared dates of the scamdemic from yeah, 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 the World yeah, yeah. Health Organization. I was not sick a single freaking day. I never took nah. a single COVID nineteen test. Same. Same here. I didn't do any uh, of their stupid shit. Didn't I dance any of their. I didn't even, dance their dance. I got fired sing their from song. my job because I would not put a mask on. That's uh, sounds like someone needs a lawyer. <laughs> but I'm sure that's uh, yeah. The justice system. If you were going to have a lawyer first, you need a justice system. That, right? right. Exactly. I mean. Don't you know, like the lady at justice, it's blind and as a scale. And, and apparently retarded. More, yeah. And if you put more money in one side of the scale, and then, part then, on the scale and, then, and the fucking and it, evidence is on the other side. I, that, that's the fucking, when I was a little kid, I saw that and I was like, so what you're saying is if you put more money on the scale than the evidence, then you win. Because that's what always happens. Yeah. Bingo. I remember as a kid, them always trying to sensationalize this or that to the adults and get them all watching Cheers and fucking Cosby Show and <laughs> social programming. It used to be funny when I was a teenager, and then I watched it as an adult and thought, yeah, this is you know, this fucking nostalgic. And then I watched it as an adult, I was like, ooh, this is like, this is what the fucking adult mentality was when I was a kid. No, uh, I'm going on. no, most well, popular shows. Well, you most know. popular shows, man. Well, allegedly. Come on, it was Nielsen. I got well, I got a damn Nielsen thing in the mail the other day. Is it really? I was like, I didn't even know they me? do that shit anymore. Yeah, they, just... they still do that. I think they do it for. Uh, I think they've included streaming platforms in their Nielsen ratings now because they're they're also now trying to make the transition way too late they should have been doing it 10 years ago 
Uh, but Nielsen is trying to survive in the new marketplace, and I don't think it's going to go well for them. I took what I received from them, which probably had $5 inside because that's what they do. They take five, uh, five single-dollar bills, and they put them in the, uh, in the mailer to entice people to, to respond it. to the shit. Well, yeah, it's, well, it's like a, like a guilt trip type thing, right? People open it. There's money inside. They get the free money. People start feeling guilty for getting the free money. So they fill out the form and send it back. Right. And you know that they're going to be honest in what they put on the form because the guilt is what prompted them to fill out the form in the first place. It's fucking genius marketing, man. It really, really is. But I took it and I just threw it straight in the trash can outside. <laughs> so I'm thinking, what would I do? So we put money in the mail. Thanks. Throw it in the trash. Yeah. Take the money, throw that in the trash. I probably should have opened it. I think it's still out there. I might go and open it tomorrow. <laughs> I, I must get like 10 fantastic I think about offers. That. I must get like 10 a month <laughs> fantastical offers of thousands of dollars they would have given me in cash. So here's the thing, guys. We have to start a charity, and we'll raise funds for the charity. And you and I will be partners, the three of us, right? And uh, we'll pay each other a couple mil a month or whatever. So it's probably best we don't broadcast the inner we'll, working of our charity. We'll, on we'll the, raise. Uh, we'll raise. Uh, we'll raise a hundred million dollars. But, but nobody's for, listening. What are you talking about, Rob? <laughs> We'll raise a hundred million dollars. You think charity. this is louder with Crowder? Somebody's what, always what's listening. Charity that people will donate to. Is it little kids with cancer? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shout we raise a hundred million in dollars. Bluffdale. We raise a hundred million dollars for the victims of uh, Dupont Corporation or whatever, and but we only have to give them like five million, and we can keep the rest. Oh, that's I mean, that's, that's a really good grift yeah. because Dupont doesn't even really exist anymore. But people still <laughs> recognize the name. They're like, oh, like, DuPont, you, bad, DuPont. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't even have to pay the conglomerate of some other Dow Chemical Corporation. Yeah. But all these all these um, charitable organizations that have, like, a nice name and everything, like, that's basically how they operate. <laughs> they give 5% of the uh, – so for every dollar they get, they pass on, like, f a nickel. And the rest of it gets sucked well, yeah, up that's into how, their own That's pockets. how a charity works. Yeah. So you were talking about a scam earlier. Fuck, man. Can you imagine? Let's raise money for the, fucking, the blue line for our troops or whatever the fuck. And then find some douche that'll take the fucking 250 grand and we keep the fucking millions and hundreds of... <laughs> that's what everything is. And you know what it does? It stops the real help from getting to where it would be going the goodwill the the the, the finite resources no, you haven't a, you, but you didn't, help. you didn't take goodwill. it far enough you didn't take it far enough rbl because eventually the people that donated the money to the charity will come looking for us and they will file lawsuits against us because again that's how the system works but all we have to do is make sure that we we hire the right lawyers, right? So that they can pay off the right judges ahead of time so that when we actually get into court and we plead effective altruism because our heart was in the right place and we of really course, did we want so to help people, we'll be able to get off scot-free. Trying to save everyone. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I was out in the moment you guys are trying to make money off the charity. <laughs> but, 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 like ninety percent of the charities that you encounter in in your life are going to be this way. Well, this is their model. I, I, I learned that many years ago that at least, um, at least ninety percent, and sometimes upward of that of every charity that is advertising, it goes to their internal um, pay and re-advertising like it's a very small percentage of what you give actually goes to whatever the fuck it is that they say the united way is one in particular uh, my previous my my, 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 my previous one I, my I, previous I, job tried to get united way sponsorships from every employee um as part of like your you know orientation 
like, yeah, the United Way. And you look into it, you're like, these motherfuckers aren't doing anything for anybody. You know, you know who I think actually has the best grift on the planet right now? Try, <laughs> try and guess. Try and guess who, who I'm going to say. You'll, I'll give each one of you one guess. Donald who's, Trump. Who's running the best grift on the planet right, right now? I, dude, that's... Elon Musk, Donald Trump. There's a lot of grifts going on at the same time. You're really asking me the best one? The best it really one. De- that depends on your your perspective. Well, You're I'm on. going to say it's the Red Cross. Oh, because the Red, the the Red, Red Cross, Cross runs has blood always... drives, right? They make Where they incredible. set up in your community oh, no, and they get they people to come blood. in and donate blood to the Red Cross because, oh, we're going to make sure that the hospitals have it for when they need to do transfusions and surgeries and yada, yada, yada. Meantime, what they're doing is they're actually selling the shit out the back door for like two grand a pint and basically pocketing it all as profit. You're not, talking about the, the, the bull, you're not talking about the bullshit Red Cross, sorry. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about, yeah. So their business model is literally sucking blood out of people and selling, and selling it, it for profit. And they sell, look, they put the commercials in the children's fucking face to see like Red Cross donate, yeah. give today. Yeah. And, and you grow up thinking that's a hero in your community and shit. I it's would, I would, I, I'm O positive and I would donate to any brother, family member, whatever they needed a pint of my blood, but I didn't fucking give it to them to sell. I might I might get loose with the unvaccinated sperm at some point. I don't know, but from now on, nobody yeah, I don't anybody. I'm 52. I don't know if anyone wants that, but it's unvaccinated from that perspective. <laughs> Every other poison that they injected in me up to that point, yeah. Bro, up, imagine bro? now you go and you give plasma for the cash, like like people did back in the day, and they inject you with fucking uh, I, nano lipid fucking particles and shit. I, when when yeah. I was in the Navy in my fucking 20, early, you know, I think I was like 19, 20, 21 when I was in there. But people I was friends with would go sell their fucking plasma every time they could. I knew this guy, Corey Smith, and he was so pale and his eyes were all sunken in. And he was always he always had beer money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he had no blood. His blood was straight up Milwaukee's best ice, bro. Damn. Imagine this, if they had this, a sperm bank in your town. These guys are smoking crack, but you know, gotta let people gotta let people go on their own discoveries. You know, <laughs> I watched my dog earlier tonight sniffing around on a carpet, like hoping if drop of food had been dropped. And I was thinking that man, she's like on every inch smelling, trying to find a, just a little piece of that crack rock in the rug in the carpet. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I just had a thought. They've been selling us through advertising this modern updated version of husband and wife having children, making a family and a happy life together. They've been selling it to us in, in every single way. But as it gets updated, it goes from like Ozzy and Harriet to Murphy Brown to fucking, you know, whatever. And it's like the fertility Alan rates Peggy are down, Bundy the birth rates are up. Like everything happy about it is twisted and sad and broken. And like there's I no, mean, it's no longer giving life. If, it's like a fucking dying plant. If you're plugged <laughs> into that pop culture lifestyle where you're just sedentary, sitting there watching on the TV, everything that they're like, whatever the popular shit is. I mean, they've they've really lost that to a degree. I mean, it's more older people who watch TV. The, the new generation, the new generation is just plugged into their fucking phones on social media twenty four seven. Most groupings of like younger people, you'll see them like at a social gathering, and they're all sitting there on their phones, not talking to each other. Well, it's that's like, why TV is about to go away. Because the the generation that was raised on television is about to go away. The shared viewing experience is about to go away. Everything will be personalized. Everything will be personalized now. Your your echo chamber. That's right. The airtight. You will never escape it. The truth will never get in. No light will penetrate between the cracks. 
Well, it's <laughs> it's about that. It's about uh, keeping your silo consistent. It's also about making sure that they maximize the amount of data that they are able to farm from you while you are interacting with that data silo that they have created for you. Based on, you know, all your past interactions with the algorithm. Well, the allude... They're, Fun they're, stuff. That shit's going to be incredibly useful when we're all implanted with devices to track our every movement and our uh, biorhythm, what our biological signature. Mm -hmm. We already have oh, those. Boy. Yeah, you carry it around every day. They don't need to inject fucking with shit in you. But I'm talking about, like, uh, when we're, like, Progressive, another ten years. The the Tesla brain chip's already here, right? No, every uh, time it's I do here, that. but it's not working. The every, uh, every, I've heard the what Chinese I'm say, BMIs they're having a little bit better success than uh, uh, than what they're having at Neuralink, but not much. Because they have less restrictive. Uh, depending on, on what right. depending on what time of day I get in my car, it tells me where it thinks I'm going. And it's always very disappointing when I fucking throw out a curve and go somewhere else. <laughs> Does it scold you? No, as soon as you get like past where it thinks you are going, it starts like sending you directions like you want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to bring up. Oh, we'll the, just um, screw it then. We'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not you're not going to the, you're not going to the local supermarket. Fuck it, let's just go home now. <laughs> Dave, you're 15 minutes away from home. Yeah. <laughs> I just getting close, right? <laughs> That's funny. What's on your mind tonight, Dozer? Uh, well, I, I watched the show last night. I had to laugh. You know, crowd strike on Yona. <laughs> that made me giggle. Um, I actually uh, posted the show and wrote something up in my telegram group, you know, and say, Hey, these guys are great. You know, Yona's got a crazy, uh, you know, he's got, he's uh, really good at uh, descriptive and you know, his memory is like no, nobody's ever met. And I said, and, and, uh, and then drizzle, he's, he runs a, a tight ship. And after that thing went South about an hour in, I actually pulled it back. <laughs> I took it yeah. down. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'll post some more in the future. I think I have in the past on my uh, Telegram group. Let me find a better coherent yeah. version. <laughs> Things went bad. I, didn't I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, Where's nice. Lady T been? Oh, I got, a, I got a request, if you don't mind, Drizzle. What's up? Is there any way that you could, like, clip that whole scene when Yona went off about the Amazon and the Amazon women and I, it, 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 that was probably one of the best times I've ever, or it was one of the greatest moments on this channel because he was just firing on all cylinders. Was that last and it was night? Just, no, no, this was oh. about uh, a couple months ago when he it was oh, towards was the it? end of the I, show. I need, uh, I need an episode. You guys, <laughs> you guys get too high. Anyways, uh, it was towards the end of the show and he was talking about Pizarro and these two guys that were running around in the Amazon. It, it it was like a, ge a geography, uh, you know, lesson. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll find it. Yeah, I'll find it and I'll, I'll send. Yeah. yeah, I'll look for it. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I was like, that was probably the mo moment I got addicted to the show. <laughs> oh, wow. That's actually, that's good to know. Thank you. Uh, thank you for telling me that. We're going to have to figure out what the... episode that is and clip that shit yeah, out. Yeah, make that your uh, Put YouTube it everywhere. Short. Especially with the news coming about that uh, the northern Colombians like uh, having their first sexual experience with a donkey. <laughs> Did you see that shit? No. Like, no. Out this week, somebody put a fucking video out this week, and they were like going around like trying to determine if it was a real thing or it was just some kind of <laughs> like social. Uh, or, uh, Listen, man, there's something weird going on south of the border with with horses. It was. They ride them it without was, saddles, you know? It was the northern part of Colombia um, in a specific area. I can't remember the town because I was just laughing too hard. But, yeah, they were interviewing, like, young boys who were all saying that they got their first sexual experience, like, with a donkey. 
and uh, the, uh, they, were inter- they were interviewing the girls, and the girls were saying the same thing that the boys they they're more interested in the donkeys. It's like what the fuck. Hmm. I, worked, I worked with uh, some Guatemalans, and one of them told me that they were like, "Have you ever seen a horse pussy? It's it's, just, it's like human, but it's the same thing." You know, <laughs> like sorry for the. Sorry, and, buddy. And he told me that's something that goes on down there, for real, particularly <laughs> when there's alcohol involved. Appreciate your input, uh, buddy. But that I'm gonna stick that with does the not people of my species. Me. I've known I've known <laughs> many humans in my life, and I would say probably about fifth of fifty percent of them. Yeah, I could see them doing it. I mean, it's like cultural norms across the planet are all different. There's cannibalism in parts of the world, and it's normal yeah. there, you know. So, well, that's the yeah, there's amazing sheep thing. everywhere, it's, you know. It's the amazing thing about people. If fucking and other I, people I've sign actually, off on their bullshit, they all think it's fucking all right. I have heard stories of Scotsmen who speak very fondly of sheep. I've never met these kind of guys. So they I can't God. tell you you're you're spending too much time at the pub. <clears throat> See them struggling with the suicidal sheep at the edge of the cliff, but they won't let them go. They keep pushing back. You're saying <laughs> <laughs> the Scotsman protects them and brings them back to the fold, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much is that <laughs> urban legend or like real though. I, I guess uh, in modern day when they go stick a camera in fucking people's face and they're either you know. Why does this happen when I see? Last week when I was here, I brought up Catherine the Great. No, you brought up the guy getting killed by a horse dong. Oh. And then I said Catherine the Great. <laughs> Thanks for what we're talking me. about. But it's, it's I remember that comedy show, man. It's <laughs> always gonna eventually get back to dick and fart jokes. This is yeah. best reality time when I show up. Get ready for it, kids. I mean, this is a show for humans, after all. I mean, there was a there was a real lesson to be learned in that fucking video. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, be careful. Be careful. Careful what you wish for. Or... That's right. You would be know. amazed how many ER visits are just people with stuff they self inserted they can't get out. Yeah, oh, it's more than a, you uh, think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's I, more I, than like AR-15 or gun violence or something. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, like, it's it's not, not all so little bad. Jenny has 103 fever for five days that we can't figure out how to get it to break. No, there's uh, yeah. people, uh, you know, people like to uh, mess around, you know. To find out my, more, my fuck around. Was a nerd. My ex was a nurse who didn't like work a lot in hospitals. She did more dialysis, but she did do a little bit of like uh, floor nursing in hospitals. And the stories are just ridiculous. Right. That's that's where I got this story. It was we're we're from a hospital. You know, people talking. You mean the people. person who died? No, like, like fifteen. Uh, I'm from the Northwest originally. And like 15 years ago, a guy got a perforated colon because they had this like this club out in Enumclaw, Washington, and the guy died. And it when the police guys. came in, yeah, and it was like it was, it, and it turned out the guy that ran it was a Boeing employee, and they oh, turned God. into this big hubbub, and they tried to like throw him in jail or something. And I don't know what happened. I th- I heard he moved down to Tennessee, and he was doing the same thing. That was about five years ago, and then after that, I stopped hearing about it. I, I saw it on Joe Rogan.net before he was like a podcaster and he was just a mm-hmm. comedian. Yeah, this yeah. is before I moved down here. So it's like 15, maybe almost 20 years ago. Yeah, but that yep. was the story behind it. It was some farm yeah. that the owner was yep. letting people come do that shit. And yeah, and it was in Enumclaw, Washington. And the guy got a perforated colon and bled out. Damn. <laughs> yeah, on video. That's how I got caught. Uh, on video, yeah, I guess. In fact, forever yeah. labeled death by horse cock. I, I'd like to I think that's. The, I'd like to think that's if the way. If that you happens to, to me, Rob, I want to make sure that that is exactly what goes on my tombstone. Mm-hmm. Here lies I'd Drizzle, like... death by horse cock. <laughs> I want everyone to know. I want that to be a monument to stand for the ages, like the Georgia Guidestones. 
If that's your freak, <laughs> man, let that flag fly in death. At least. <laughs> you can't... Are you gonna put? Are you gonna put a hole in your tombstone? <laughs> that doesn't necessarily point at the at the North Star. <laughs> <laughs> depends on what we have budget for. It really <laughs> depends on your interpretation of it all, really. So you know, I've had a few days to get used to it. Now we've done some talking about it. I think I'm finally starting to come around to the idea. Of President Camel Toe. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for like the next, yeah, for the next uh, four and a half months until we get to November and then she gets her I, rug pull. I yeah. want to see, I, I want to see him put a physical person out there that isn't taller than the fucking previous version or have a plastic face on him. Like, Which what, who are we talking about? Are we talking about Joe or come a lot? Talking about fucking Joe. I want proof of life, man. Yeah, dude was a f dude was like on his last legs. Didn't know where the fuck he was yeah. at like a couple of weeks ago. Now all of a sudden they want to put out something that's somewhat coherent. Now they put stutter. out a AI Joe. Yeah, or, or no, was yeah. it uh, I, Adam I, Curry I, called it AGI Joe? Yeah, Artificial general like, intelligence, Joe. They they didn't like totally a hundred percent insult people. You know what? It was it was enough if you're paying attention. Really, <laughs> really odd that the crowd strike thing happens, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh no, no more Joe, no more Joe. We got to get we got to get rid of Joe. We got to get rid of Joe now. Almost like something got damaged. It, it was amazing that the recording that Kamala was talking to had... It was a phone a, call, Rob. She was on a phone call. Yeah, it was um, it was providing like answers as if it was talking to somebody. It's amazing. <laughs> Did they broadcast like both sides of that phone call? Oh, they should have. Oh, I, that'd be, damn it. I, Nah, sorry. So now that the process has played out. Oh, wow. From the grassroots bottom up, we are here today to throw our support behind Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm clapping. Oh, you don't have God. to. He's a fucking... <laughs> wow. Evil. Good job. Jesus, that was very evil. <laughs> that was uh, you know, between Trump, uh, Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris, uh, you pretty much have to be a comedian or a fool in order to be a president nowadays well and you're right i'm gonna miss joe biden he was he, he was one of the funniest presidents we ever had he was something special man like i don't, yeah. I don't trump, think we really trump. appreciated the the biden presidency while it was taking place we're gonna believe it or not we are going to look back on the biden presidency with very fond and entertaining memories i'm gonna make sure of yep. it god damn it yeah, yeah, I that agree. my promise to the entire audience. I don't you know, think Kamala Kam 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 was not going to disappoint. I mean, she's already oh, she's dude, already got she's, her gas. Yeah. Oh, she's like somebody, uh, somebody stuck something up her ass because she is out and moving and shaking it. Yeah, man, she's doing her thing. She's in her element. I think it's going to be dancing. a rocking good time, yeah. She's dancing, jiving, yeah. pre pretending like she's yeah, black. She's up grinding on people and shit, yeah. Yeah, she's got to try to whatever, right? what, 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 whatever democratic stereotype of black is, that's what she's doing right now. I mean, it might not be authentic to all the black people we know and they're friends with, but, you know, to their fucking ilk, it's a donor class. That That's how they act, I guess. Wouldn't she be making like tandoori and fucking... <laughs> No so man, collard greens, collard greens. Her thing is collard greens. You don't, you you don't shock see. Y'all don't know. Y'all just listen. don't know. You don't uh, listen, listen to the right podcast, man. Every like, uh, Christmas, people Basmati ask Camel Toe for her collard greens. They're that good. Every Christmas. Listen, listen to me, America. Kamala Harris is not black. Her family is Indian, and they owned black African slaves in Jamaica. Somehow she still managed. Man. 
somehow she still managed to put 1,500 African-American men in prison for small amounts Dude, this of This is going to make for a wild clip. And for that. just... <laughs> and, but and, and, at the same and, time, and, and, this is definitely okay, going we, on TikTok. Even with all that background, even talk. even with that background, she couldn't even get it done without <laughs> sucking a bunch of old man dick. So what is, what's that tell you about your chances in this world? If she wants me to get in that voting booth, she better be on her knees inside on the other end. If you want to get in the power structure, you better be ready to fucking suck a shriveled up old man's dick is what That's I'm right. telling you. <laughs> That's right. That's why I'm running for mayor right now. <laughs> nah, man, this is... uh. Sounds like a whole lot less dick to suck to be the mayor. I think she was <laughs> she was she was born to be the sacrificial uh, uh, offering. She's a placeholder right now, right? Yeah, but so she gives bad. hope. Look, she was rated the most uh, left of all, right? So she gives hope to all the like Antifa, like commie, like I want my student loans forgiven and I want to yeah, kill. She had people. the most liberal Start record. Over. They just want some time to pass by. It apparently, so. is now being scrubbed. They, they want everybody in the nation to forget that Gavin Newsom is a uh, you know opportunistic scumbag. Will do anything the power structure tells them. <laughs> and then oh, he's going to come out. They him out of the spotlight quick, didn't they? Oh God, like, Gavin Newsom. Who's that? Who are you talking about? He, Gavin I, Newsom. I'm, I'm sure they did. Gavin, we have of... somebody named no, Gavin no, in the party. No, he's, he's the, How he's many? The going to be the vice the vice president. It's going to be Newsom and Bluesom. How many how many focus <laughs> groups and uh, millions of dollars do you think were spent on them trying to determine that he's not popular to the rest of the country? Matter of fact, everybody in his own fucking state. Oh, it doesn't them. matter. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna remake his image. He's very he's a very <laughs> handsome man. So yeah, but you're voting for California. Think about it. it California's got astigmatism all over the United States. Why would you want to vote for him? Well, I don't know. People generally who vote are uh, uninformed. and The useful idiots dream of Californication. Damn, I typed in (laughs) G-A-V-I and it knew what I was looking for. That's spooky. My family's always voting for that day and I'm going to keep voting for that day until I'm dead. You know, there's These that are the common men, and they're against the wars. Yeah, even though they're like, the fighting, and they are good for the the colored folks. Even even though, yeah, even though they wanted to keep slavery going on, and they kind of essentially tried to make a little plantation around their "we're going to give you shit and uh, ruin which your is what Ron families. Paul actually was trying to fight against, right? With his welfare reform, and and that's why he got mislabeled as a racist, right? Which is why I lost some of my friends from high school because I like was like Ron Paul's right about everything, and they were like, "You're a fucking racist." No. <clears throat> yeah, common Paul, sense. Common sense. Make you know when when uh, the government makes it a uh, effort to like break up families, and you know they all of a sudden come up with some type of counterculture counter, uh, counterculture that glorifies violence and uh, views women as uh, objects like that. I imagine what you do over 40, 50 years with that shit. Never mind. That's, that's what exactly what we've seen now. <laughs> President Camacho is upgrading the um, Brondo streams. I, I remember... I, I mean, I remember when Madonna was out there per- parading her ugly ass back in the 80s. As the like, number one uh, movie was called Ass. Yeah, it was a very conservative time and things were like breaking out. You know, don't you find it interesting that uh, they had primaries in the last election cycle and they don't have them anymore all of a sudden and nobody's talking about that? Well, they did. Have I mean, they primaries. just kicked. I mean, they they just this year. Yeah. I mean, this election cycle, they had primaries. They, they had like a week of primaries Dude. on each side. Dude, fucking Hulk Hogan <laughs> was at the Republican they, they National did. Convention in character. They, ripping they his had shirt like off. a week of primaries where Talk everybody about was about like, the Trump of maniacs. Right, we're just going to do the same thing that we did last time. <laughs> uh, just bring Bernie back. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, fuck. The Macho uh, Man, if he was alive, so it would looks be like, at the fucking All right, 2018, so it would have been 2022. Murder, single-payer right, healthcare. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> So Newsom's current term as governor is due to expire 2026, or I guess it would technically be January of 2027. That gives him a full year, um, not counting the last year of his term in office, which he'll probably use that time as well. But that gives him at least a full 12 months to completely remake his image politically before just, beginning the campaign cycle for 2028. And well, I guarantee it's going to fucking happen. Mark it down for 2027. That was just news this week that he got the okay to sweep the homeless people. Out. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. Supreme Court Dude. said, give him the heave fucking ho, Gavin. And he said, I, Captain. It's like, I'm going to fix that. What, what did he say like 12 years ago? I'm going to, I'm running on uh, fixing the homeless problem. That's right. You know, he didn't say uh, how he was going to fix it. He just said he was going to fix it. Yeah, I mean, that's one way of fixing it. They did it temporarily when, you know, their Chinese masters came into California. And it's it, well, that was, I think that was specifically London Breed. I'm not, I don't know how much Gavin had to do with that. He, he might have been there to observe because I've heard he's into that kind of thing. Who knows how much of that whole power structure has slipped over the years because there was a bunch of incompetence running it. <laughs> California Third and four. the most welfare and social security every month of any state. So around the country, people that wanted to do that went to California, bummed around on Skid Row for a while, then went to Social Security and welfare and got mega paid. And then they could even leave the state and still keep getting that higher amount. So what? here in West Virginia, the amount would have been $700, but in California it was 1240 So the dude will go to California, bum around for a little bit, boom, come back. With the twelve forty, I'm depressed. I get this from the government. Well, California well, Gat- has Gavin a Newsom. His uh, when he uh, his advertisement under every advertisement for President Gavin Newsom for election, it should say Proposition sixty five may cause cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys get that, but. All the products say 65. It's some kind of like act in California. It has to uh, disclose that it, the product may cause cancer. Every, every, even on the East Coast, all the products, they, yeah. they don't, they don't say anything other than that in the state of California, this is considered to be cancer causing. This is known, yeah. <laughs> 65. Oh, so the state of California. well, I'm, a, I'm in Massachusetts, so I must be safe. <laughs> that's all good. Exactly. That's how that exactly. works. Exactly. That's why America is the greatest country on earth. What kills you in California is, uh, you know, a simple pleasure in Nebraska. No, I've never really. Look, they're not all home runs, evil. folks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember watching, you know, cartoons when I was a little kid of like the super friends and uh, the, the bad guys and the good guys. And <laughs> I never realized fucking how evil they really were. It's like more than. Yeah, yeah they really are. Cartoonish yeah. super yeah. villains. Yeah. Bill Gates is Cobra Commander. I know it's <laughs> fucked up. It's really <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Like yeah. Cobra and G.I. Joe would come up with some like genetic engineering plot to like turn all the humans into like you oh know. holy I, shit dude I, I, I just had a great shit, idea you know? i just had a great at, idea at least back then they pretended, at, at least back then they had like a defined enemy now the enemy is 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 all around you the, well, the enemy is you. us we are yes. the enemy yeah that's this we is are. We, we are on the battlefield right now rob i don't know if you were aware of that or not but oh, I'm aware. Because of they the separate. fact that we become media four days a week, uh, we are active participants on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. And will be considered as such if, if we are uh, deemed to be a liability. 
Mm. Yeah. That, those Farming. are the operational rules of fifth generational warfare. Farming yeah, is domestic terrorism. One, you make a funny meme one day, and then uh, you find out next you're day a you're in jail. Well, not the next day, it <laughs> takes a couple on a weeks. Podcast but... Telling the world that the vaccine definitely gave your son autism. Oh, the dude you know, who made the semantics. The, the, the dude who made a, it a, says cephalopathy, and then the doctor in the office says autism, and those are two different terms that describe the exact same condition. Poisoned by vaccine. Yep. YouTube. All right. So Suck we got about phone. we got about twenty minutes left. We have not gotten to uh, this subject yet, which I said at the beginning of the show we would eventually get to it. So uh, we have our two candidates for the selection uh, at the moment. That's subject to change between now and November, obviously. But we now have the question of the lame duck president, Joe Biden. We have another four and a half months to get through until the election. I'm sorry, selection. I don't know where that came from. I think it was gas. Um, it's revealed he's dead and Hillary Clinton becomes vice president. When? Yeah, exactly. When and <laughs> how? When and how? Does Joe Biden make it to November or or even to January to inauguration day? Because think about no. that. Think about that. Even, Kamala can even, still become president like January 3rd. Of two thousand twenty five. Did he die like eight years ago for real? <laughs> I don't know. There's been there's been like three different just, Joe Biden. I want to know low. what's the what's the script? What's the play? Like what's the thing that's gonna capture everybody's uh attention? It, it's it I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's just to fucking get everybody fretting and like upset about shit they have no control over while these fucking idiots are already on to their next fucking move. No, yeah, I want to be I, see three months from now. I want to be able to be like I told you, fuckers. So Shh. Joe There's Biden wasn't going to make it all the way to fucking November, and you got I, your woman president anyway. You didn't have a choice in the matter. Ha ha! And now she's gone. Well, here here's my interpretation. The fucking they're alerting the normies now that the fucking ship is sinking, <laughs> and you might want to make other fucking plans, guys, because this is what's fucking really going on. It's a fucking circus. Like if you haven't noticed the last four years of like every fucking person playing make believe in their administration, sinking, and they're pretending to be the captain while they're looting it. That's all it is. Yeah. Like there's been like one ridiculous public scandal after another. Their nuclear uh, waste disposal person was stealing people's luggage at the fucking airports. That, that was <laughs> ladies' that was clothing. Amazing. Yeah. Somebody yeah. making at least six figures, I would hope, to be in that kind of important position. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, that's what you're tolerating? Yeah, that's what you're tolerating. Yeah, that's what you're tolerating. And he actually, he stole the luggage of somebody who was fairly well-known, like a a well-known public speaker. It was like, uh, yeah, that's, that's my, that's my, uh, my scarf there that you got that you're wearing there, buddy. Yeah. My grandmother gave (laughs) that. I thought that was fake. (laughs) No, that was, that was real. He got away with it for a long time. uh, I would really think that the position of disposing of nuclear waste is a little more important. It's a little, <laughs> you, you put a little more scrutiny into the hiring process. You'd want a boy scout. To do <laughs> did that you go job, to public just... school, Rob? I did. Yeah. I did. Then, you know, those people are out there in the workforce. <clears throat> those yeah, people you went all... to school with, you remember them? I do. Yeah. I remember. Fortunately, I went to a very small school. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I I remember this fat kid when I moved to West Virginia. There was this fat kid, and he fucking he was a neighbor, and he always had a peanut butter sandwich in his hand. And I tried to be nice to him. I tried to say hi to him. That's a hell. And of he a just started trying to. Power. He just he just started. Kicking me. <laughs> no, his mom would come out every five minutes with a half a peanut butter sandwich for him. I swear to God. 
<laughs> but this is like a fucking like, cartoon. Circle around the neighborhood and get back to his house every five minutes for a peanut butter sandwich. But he he was he was like a year younger than me. So I was like, I'll be nice to this kid. He'll be nice to me. I'll go talk to him. I'm the neighbor now. Oh my god, we need a neighbor. And he's trying to kick me. He's just fucking trying. He's like, and he keeps going, hey ya, hey ya, and trying to kick me. And he's like, just <laughs> <"This is laughs> <what happens." laughs> he can't hit me. And I'm just walking backwards, <laughs> laughing at this point. After like the sixth time he missed, I'm just started laughing. Does he and ever drop really- the peanut butter sandwich? Never. He may have. He may have I, squished it. I, oh, he squished I, it in his hands, and it got on his fingers. But here's the here's my point. I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> It's just like a that Aesop's was, fable at this point. I got a lot of interpretation to do. Dude, this this I, might I, be I the best episode of horror. Open Lines ever. I found out to my horror that this person is now a corrections officer. And I'm oh, just picturing God. them like, like, get in your cells. It's locked down. hey And he's like fucking kicking dudes <laughs> in the back. Doing like big damage to their bodies. Like just breaking people. He's like, Thinking of peanut butter. <laughs> it smells like peanut butter. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's terrifying, bro. Victimless uh, crime. Get in that fucking cage, boy. And, and his cousin <laughs> was kind of a bully, too, actually, although he was my friend, too. But he was like a bully first. He's a, he's a fucking sheriff or a cop or some fucking. And it's like, why do these bullies want to become cops and corrections officers so much, man? Like, why do these pedophiles want to drive short buses? Why or it'd be scoutmasters, you know what I mean? Like, what? well, we know we why the pedophiles hanging out the short it, bus. That's kind of obvious. obvious. Why, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those children can't tell. That's that's low hanging yeah. fruit for them. Yeah, you can't be a, you can't be a, nickel, be a Nickelodeon up. or Disney <laughs> animator. I mean, you got to fucking work the to... short bus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Society needs to put the screen <laughs> up. So we, don't have, we don't have people exploiting. Social uh, institutions, so they can get their fucking power trips out, and they're and they're not they're nuts. No, unfortunately, I think all those people are down at the border. I don't know. I'm just worried about the time when they fucking cut it off, where they're not letting you leave. <laughs> oh, that's coming. Yeah, Drizzle, yeah. you used to live in Acapulco. I mean, yep. you just moved back recently, didn't you? Uh, All of a sudden, the border's going to be real secure. <laughs> it wasn't bad. I, well, I mean, how long? How long ago did you move back to the Piney Woods? Uh, it was uh, October of last year. Yeah. So yeah, we're okay. About yeah, three quarters about of the a, time of I the started following. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense because I remember you were down there. I was on. I I think uh, I was following you even before I went to uh, Anarco Poco, and I think I asked you a couple questions about if you were going or not oh. and you had some like eh, i don't think so <laughs> yeah I, I don't know been there done that <laughs> well it wasn't it wasn't so much been there done that because i haven't actually been to the event uh but mm-hmm. i had i had met some folks associated with it and i was like oh okay all right Let's yeah see how it works i'm not going to say much more than that <laughs> yeah okay yeah. yeah, it's a it's an expensive investment to uh, yeah. be part of the whole thing. I mean, so. they, hey, people go and they and they have a great experience and they love it, and I think that's awesome. I do. Yeah, uh, I've I've heard people's experiences were great there. You want to hear a funny story? Go for I it. I was at work. I was at work, and I slipped and fell on the plane, and I've never fallen. I mean, like I'm a cat. I. I lacerated myself under the eye i had to go to the hospital and get like 16 stitches i had a black eye and this happened on a wednesday i literally got on a flight on saturday and flew to acapulco and i had this black eye and uh so anybody that was you know asked me about it i just said i'm from the illuminati one eye club but um (laughs) when i was in atlanta i uh Wait, I was like get, getting on the plane in Atlanta. I, I saw Andrew Kaufman. I said, hey, I'm, hey, Andrew, how are you? And he goes, oh, hey. And he got, looked at me funny. And uh, turns out I sat next to him. I talked to that guy the whole flight down. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was actually real interesting. Yeah. But um, and then on the way back, I sat with Christopher Gardner. I don't know if you know who he is. Sounds familiar. 
Topher. His, he, his nickname's Topher. Okay. He hangs, he hangs out with the Owen Benjamin's crowd. Okay. He's one of those guys. He, he's gotcha. friends with Owen. Gotcha. Bear Taria crowd. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going. I'll be there in about a month. I'm going to Bear Taria. It'll be my third of time. Nice. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. What's all, what's all about? I've, I, yeah, I've heard, but I've never. It's, uh, it's, I'll tell you what. Like when it. you get 2,000 people together and there's no alcohol or drugs being used, it's crazy. And a lot of kids, it's like all family oriented. So, you know, it's mm. such high vibration. It's, it's, it's addictive. I, can it's a, I would yeah. highly recommend anybody that wants to go to an event with multi, with a lot of people and very family oriented and, you know, and, and not religious either. You know, you'd, you'd think that, oh, if you want to have like an event like that, you'd have to be some kind of like, uh, you know, religious gathering, but it's not. So. Yeah, well, Scott uh, Armstrong's always spoken uh, very highly of, uh, yeah, of I'm, Owen's I'm in-person picking, gatherings. That's the I'm picking of- him up on the way there this time. I did oh, last nice. year. Nice. Yeah, yeah no, I was Scott just talking to him high. tonight. I will. I will. Yeah. In fact, I was talking to him about going early this year so we dude. can volunteer to oh my God, help set dude. up. Dude, Scott was part of my, uh, my experience in Pueblo, and I don't think he understands that. And I don't, I don't need, I still don't understand do that part of the experience. So, so when I got to Pueblo, I was plied yeah, yeah. with mushrooms. And, right, right. Uh, I remember. And I had a very personal experience during the, the first night of the third eye carnival. Scott was a part of that. Oh, Scott was there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, he he went to the third eye weekend. festival. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that, that motherfucker has gone to every event that's on my radar. I don't he know how he's doing he's it. Been, uh, hey, he figured it out. He's living he the life. I, was, from, I sent him an there. advertisement. I just sent him an advertisement for Karen B's Flat Toberfest in Spartanburg. I was like, hey, man, that's halfway between you and me. Why don't you meet us there? <laughs> he was Might as well go to every event. Yeah. He went to Freedom Fest in Vegas right after. He right, right. Pueblo. He was also at uh, he was at Music in Sky before uh, yep. he got to Pueblo. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. He's, been, like, he's, he's been just he, he just gallivants around the country. Scott Armstrong, Rebunk News, yeah, I know. and Unject. I know. I know. He's not even trying. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's so funny. The guy's just so like, oh yeah, I guess I'll go. <laughs> His uh. He, the way he described it to uh, on Grand Theft World, um, he was talking about his experience at the Freedom Fest. And the only it's, the only information I had was that post that you made that Scott had posted and you reposted, Drizzle, talking about, you know, like these Vax people and, you know, like just sounded like miserable. It's like, yeah. wait a minute, is it Freedom Fest or is it like these losers? Oh. And, um, and if you go in Grand Theft uh, World... Scott talked about it for about 15, 20 minutes. He talked Glowy about the fest. whole event. And it actually was pretty darn cool mm. for him. Yeah, it's amazing that... Uh, well, he trolls. did get a fair amount of press from it, which was uh, yeah, pretty did. amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for those guys, man. I really am. I hope yeah, Unjected yeah. just blows the fuck up. Well, I, who was it that um, asked for him to, uh, to go on? I don't know. It's Tim Pool. I don't remember. No, it was uh, Del Big Tree, maybe. Yeah, I think it was Del Big Tree. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so. I don't know. I just watched it today, and I've already forgotten it. Del's got a very big platform, so. Mm-hmm. No, he wanted to have uh, Scott and and uh, Stephanie. Stephanie. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Oh. Yeah. He asked me too fast. Shelby. Yeah. Shelby. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually I'm about to uh, feed their interview to the uh, clip maker and see what it spits out. This episode's hey, definitely what, going in the clip. Maker. What, why don't you get with Clip Genie? Why don't you go ask God about that Clip Genie stuff so that I can pull out that one oh, episode with Yona it. going off about the Amazon experience? I've, I've talked to him about it. Oh, definitely. That would be awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of clips that I like on your show. Well, thank you. I know I you've been doing that. them. Yeah, yeah. I, idea. I do it for promotional pur- purposes more than anything else. I, I don't I don't think there's anything of educational value in what we produce, quite honestly. Huh. Like I, uh, again, uh, part of it's my definitely entertaining. Is, 
Well, thank you. Part of my mission yeah. is to ridicule all the assholes that are putting us through this bullshit. You know? Yeah. I don't want to be exactly. here doing this shit, but somebody's got to do it. No one else was stepping up to the plate. So I was like, all right, I guess it's going to be me then. <laughs> it's to decompress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good self therapy, really. It is. The, it the is. Vent, the vent. I to enjoy other people. It. Actually, if I wasn't they, making Liberty Radio, same... I would probably be a, a listener at the very least, if not watching. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have the jester's privilege, you know. The jester's privilege is you can say things as long as it's hidden in comedy. You can kind of get away with telling the truth. You can, you can get away with a lot. You really yeah, yeah. can. Till yeah, they uh, till they Out show there. up at your door at four a.m. with a no knock warrant. <laughs> drag you out with all kinds of shit on That's your right. computer that you never put there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. CrowdStrike did it to me. Yeah. I, I remember saying like 10 years ago, some dude who uh, had kitty porn planted on his fucking computer and he actually didn't have anything to do with it and he spent his life savings in forensics to i i don't even remember the story of why this guy was being set up for this but <laughs> he spent you know his life savings in forensics to prove that he wasn't the one who actually put the shit on his computer and he was found innocent but you know he was already ruined at that point <laughs> so let that be a lesson to you. If you're using a computer connected to the internet, don't be too loud. Oh, the internet. You mean that thing that was created by the <laughs> Department of Defense? Oh, that thing? You know what, Drizzle? Last night you were talking about how the internet and connectivity has like, gone downhill. I've had nothing but trouble with Rumble and other streaming platforms. And in, that will continue. The, that will continue. Yeah, you're right. I, I think you're right. Heard, I heard uh, Whitney Webb in an interview. I can't remember who it was with. It might have been Jimmy Dore. might have been one of the other ones that she did the past couple of weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. But I actually heard her shout out the book that I consider to be the definitive history of the Internet, uh, which is a book called Surveillance Valley by an author named Yasha Levine. If folks have not read that book, go and Levine. read it. Uh, because it, yeah, I know. Uh, I actually follow him on Twitter. Um, hmm. But it lays out from the beginning up to the very present moment, including all of the key players, Peter Thiel, everybody all the way back to the very beginning with ARPA. Uh, it is a phenomenal uh, piece of history, and everyone should uh, avail themselves of it. I Say the title again, away. please. Surveillance Valley. Okay, Surveillance Valley. I like yes. kind of like Uncanny Valley. Yeah, I get it. Well, it also like Silicon Valley, because basically, yep. what he the the uh, the idea that he is putting forth in this book is that the internet was always created to be a surveillance vehicle. Yeah, the panopticon. Any, everything else is is bonus. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's it's a, it's amazing cuz they let the uh the genie out of the bottle before they had the technology to control it and uh That's how you end up with shows like this. <laughs> a lot right. of people had you know access to information that they shouldn't have been able Whoop. to get a hold of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who and wants to get the last we word in? We got about two RBL. minutes left. We got RBL. It's being memory hold as we speak, all that stuff you just mentioned. No, that's why we yeah, broadcast four nights a week. We create more than they can erase, and hopefully something survives. And the kids of uh, yeah. you know 2115 will know what life was like 100 years ago. You know, before I think uh, you, should, uh, you should buy the DVD copies of all the Corbett uh, releases and put them in a time capsule, bury them in uh, the ground <clears throat> for future generations, so they know what actually happened. Yeah, this is a history. It's going to be a lie. Seems Although, if this is the episode that survives, they're going to have a really difficult time figuring out how I know about President John McClain Mark II. 
<laughs> Digital media eventually decomposes and is left with nothing. So, like, what do we got? Whatever they fucking told us again. One more time. Mm -hmm. Cycle. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We don't have any books or, you know, the tablets, the stone tablets are what we need. <laughs> Watch the uh, ceremonies. Watch the ceremonies of the Olympics. It's right there in front of you. Oh, shit. We didn't even do that tonight. Oh, well. Maybe that was watch one of the, the things I had thought about doing. Is the next one out yet? The next uh, Olympic opening ceremony that tells yeah. us where they're going to take us? Oh, uh, No, it was, it was looked like it was just a bunch of uh, uh, woke uh, transsexual bullshit. Uh, there, I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch the whole thing in its entirety to see if there's anything there. But it really just looked like a bunch of garbage. So, so the uh, last, last season, breeding was, ourselves out of breeding ourselves out of existence, opening ceremony. Pretty much. Well, the last the last much. ceremony was about. Um, Good night, you know, everybody. Spreading, 